Apple's ecosystem is massive. The company recently put out a report that there were 1 billion iPhones currently active and about 1.6 billion Apple devices out in the world. But then, here's the problem. Historically, Apple has grown its users primarily through the sale of iPhones. And the sale of iPhones is plateauing. Lesser people are getting iPhones. For a variety of reasons, because of the larger upgrade cycle, people get iPhones less frequently these days. Uh, and then also, looking at the availability of other alternatives, cheaper alternatives in the market. You know, the iPhone has a lot of competition, and then that's reducing that, um, that, 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 um, that point of contact for Apple to get new customers. And then this brings a big question. How can Apple capture its next billion customers from the one billion square meter? And the overarching answer to that question is that Apple needs to reimagine the strategy for onboarding new users. The iPhone used to be that device you know, to lure people into the Apple ecosystem. Most of us, you know, most people here that told are like part of the Apple ecosystem have multiple Apple devices gotten through their first iPhone and then probably got a MacBook or got something else along the way. And then Apple needs to reimagine that path and then create new entry points for users to join the Apple ecosystem. And I'll give three from three, three, three focal points, three focal reasons, three focal uh, options for Apple to do this. And the very first one is for Apple to repurpose hardware for emerging markets. Now, it's common news in the industry, or it's, it's, it's common information in the industry that Apple devices are way ahead of competition. In terms of the silicon chips, the UI, the UX design, Apple leads the competition, leads the part, every iteration of devices. To give an example, the iPhone 7 was released in 2016. And the point is still runs the latest iOS, iOS 15, and it's still capable and comparable to a lot of military Android phones in the market. So if Apple can repurpose these devices and sell them to emerging markets in Asia and Africa, it helps to open up an entire new, um, an entire new population of people that did not have access to the Apple ecosystem previously. And then these customers can then be upsell and, and, and open to newer, to newer points of contact in the Apple ecosystem. The second point, is capitalizing on the Apple Watch success in the fitness and tracking industry. The Apple Watch is a clear success given by the record sales that it has made over the years. And then if you look specifically at the fitness industry, there's no other device that sits you know, at, the same, at the same level of innovation with the Apple Watch. And I say this first as a customer. Having used the Samsung, uh, uh, Samsung Watch at some point and then moved on the Apple Watch later on, the difference is very clear. From fall detection, heart rate monitoring, these are all of the features that Apple pioneered when it comes to fitness tracking. But, they, they say that, but then there's a caveat. The Apple Watch is sold as a complementary device to the iPhone. You can't use the Apple Watch without owning an iPhone. Again, speaking to Apple's over-reliance on the iPhone as an entry point for customers. So this has essentially reduced, and, uh, reduced the market that could, have been, uh, that could have been opened up to Apple. And, I, and I'll be very specific. Currently, only 20% of iPhone users own an Apple Watch. I look around this room now, I can only see one Apple Watch. <laughs> Just one Apple Watch. Oh, yes, yeah, it's just two. Yeah, no. <laughs> and, then, and then I can see more iPhones than Apple Watches in the room. So again, speaking to that example. So essentially, if, the, if Apple can repurpose the Apple Watch as a standalone device, sold specifically for fitness tracking, this will open up an entirely new set of customers that are interested in health devices. And everyone is really bothered about this. There's, there's data out there showing that people are more and more worried about their health. And then the COVID pandemic has shown that specifically. If Apple is able to do this, they can open up a new market. And just going off rough numbers, Android currently has 3 billion devices in the market. If just 1% of that number decides to scale an Apple Watch because they can use it to monitor their health, that's about 30 million users. And then scaling that up to the sale of an Apple Watch and then what they can be upsells, we currently have a revenue of about $9 billion, just like that instantly. And the number snowballs from there. And then the last point is that Apple can onboard new users through the sale of their services. It's not news that Apple has actually been worried about the iPhone over the last of the iPhone over the past year. And then what they've been doing is trying to enter the services market, rolling out Apple TV, Apple Fitness Plus, uh, uh, Apple Music. And then Apple did something that shocked the whole world when they made Apple Music available on the Android platform. So if Apple can follow this line and then bring in more of their services to users outside of the Apple ecosystem, to help these users that previously did not have access to Apple's design features, 
to have a first hand glimpse of what Apple offers. And then from there, they can be upsold and become actual paying Apple customers. And I say this personally as a user that got into the Apple ecosystem through simply using uh, the Apple Music at some, at some point. It's, it, it, I, really like the, I really like the experience and the need to upsell and get an iPhone and all of that. And then in conclusion, I think what Apple has done with the iPhone, growing all of these users through selling hardware is no small feat. For a company that makes that doesn't sell free products, compared to Facebook, where the product is a customer, and then Facebook is basically selling your data, and then very very cheap to acquire customers. Facebook only has two billion users, compared to Apple's one billion, where Apple is selling actual products. I think it's no small feat. However, Apple needs to start rethinking its strategy for growth and acquiring new customers, and by doing this, they can help defend their cash flow going forward. Thank you. And now I'll be taking your questions. Thank you. Um, I'll just ask a very simple question. So apart from, you know, uh, acquire, trying to acquire new customers, <coughs> what other challenge do you think Apple faces currently? Um, that's a good one. So one key challenge uh, I see Apple facing, really, uh, and, and this has been, um, this has been uh, over, the, over the years, has been, it's a new customers is just one what was one piece of the problem. But the bigger problem is the over reliance on one product, like I tried to address earlier, the iPhone. So basically Apple has this ecosystem where they want new customers to get into the ecosystem and then they can sell you a variety of services. But then the access point to get to this ecosystem is, is just only, primarily through the iPhone. You you rarely see users that have a MacBook and nothing else, or users with an iPad and nothing else. You, but you see people with an iPhone with various other devices. So if Apple is able to, you know, create a way of selling, selling this, um, create a way of spinning up new products that, that are standalone and then can open up new, new opportunities, I think that's something that they should be looking at. Um, yeah, so one last question just. So can you suggest a way that, for the solution that you just said, can you suggest a way that you think Apple can go to do that? Again, like a way Apple can go about like solving. Um, yeah. So, no, so for example, right now Apple is an ecosystem. Yes. Right. And only Apple products work well with Apple products. Yes. So, for example, AirPods, Apple Watch, they work with work well with Apple. But then, if they change that, that ecosystem breaks. So, I, I think Apple's greatest strength, and I'll start with this, is that Apple ecosystem. That's. The, the exact thing that they're describing, where like you need an iPhone, like you need an iPhone to really enjoy the value of an iPod, you need uh, a, a, a MacBook to enjoy that continuity feature between your iPhone and your MacBook. But then, uh, so that is not a problem in a sense. Instead, I see that as an opportunity because if Apple is able to create these standalone devices that can entice or draw users, so I'll, I'll split. I'll put it this way: uh, you get an Apple Watch. Right, because you're interested in fitness tracking, and that's all you care about. But then you are, you are, you, are, you you love fitness tracking, you enjoy all these features. But then you see some other person using the Apple Watch with an iPhone, and see that there's there's more seamless connectivity. You can see you know, there's a better experience. That kind of points you the oh I should probably get an iPhone, and then you get in you get in deeper and deeper in the Apple ecosystem. So basically, creating new new entry points for users. If they disconnected it from iPhone, could they, how would they compete against other fitness? Like, is it Garmin, Garmin? Garmin. 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 Are they better? I mean, would they have to be, what could they do then to differentiate themselves from other fitness devices? I think already, Apple has done a very great job around differentiating their product. And it does not necessarily just through coupling with the iPhone. And I'll give an example because I've used both devices. I'll start with the accuracy. Apple is super passionate about the accuracy of fitness tracking. If you, there, there are lots of tests out there where someone wears like both watches, wears an Apple Watch and wears maybe like a Samsung fit or something. And then you see how the Samsung miscount steps like over the day. So that's one selling point. And then minus that, you also see where Apple is constantly leading the pack in terms of innovation. Apple first brought in ECG tracking. Uh, 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 blood oxygen monitoring, for instance. So the Apple is, the, the, there's no dread of features. Like Apple will keep up turning in innovation. 
But then it often can open up this opportunity for more people that will serve as like an, an entry point for those people to convert and get into the Apple ecosystem in that sense. And, and I'll just put it out there again, instantly, a, a, a separate example where, for instance, I own an iPad. It's a shame that I own an iPad, but I can't use an Apple Watch because I need to couple it with an iPhone. It's so specific. There's that over-reliance on the iPhone. So I'm a, school, I'm a student in school. I get a discount. I get an iPad for schoolwork. And then I'm sort of interested in fitness tracking, but then I can't use an Apple Watch. Right? So that's kind of like limiting that customer base in that sense. Amazing. Feedback for Justin. Uh, um, OK, I can start. I really liked your first sentence about the Apple ecosystem, the, the so-called like walled garden. Um, I feel like most people in the U.S. can sort of relate to it. I think the U.S. is like 75, 80% like iPhone users. And then once you're in it, you start buying other and other products. So it's like a very engaging. Um, the language and the quality of voice is really great. Um, you speak really well. I liked your gestures and your eyes move a lot around the room. The one thing that I noticed is that your eye contact is like a split second. So it moves along, <laughs> it moves around the room so much that you don't hold eye contact with people. You know, it's like, I don't know if it's maybe because I'm like all the way at the end and then you're bouncing back around, but um, like just try to hold that a little bit longer. I feel like people are gonna be more engaged and it's like, oh, you looked at me for like half a second and then you moved on to other people. Um, I think that's mostly it. So like, like st 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 still with you? Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. So I feel like you're actually speaking to me. It's like you kind of just look and then like I'm going. Yeah. I, I think I, I think there's also the part where like I'm constantly being like, you know, I don't want to repeat the last, the last thing to do. Like, yeah. I don't want to look at you because I like, remember last time. <laughs> yeah. But look at like the forehead yeah. or the, like the mouth or the mask so you don't like so to me, it looks like you're staring into my eyes, but I'm just staring at your head. Yes. Ibrahim, did you want to make a comment for Tosin? <coughs> I'll make a comment that hasn't been made yet, and that's, again, the clarity of your structure. You gave us a great example of how that context, trigger, question, answer, introduction sits atop the pyramid and the three lines of reasoning that support your answer. And you give us a good example of how you don't have to name them. You can just say, you know, this is for three reasons. Um, and then you go through them. And each one was categorically distinct, so it had all the clarity that you were. And I think someone said they liked your first. You said you liked his first set, so did I. Yes. And also the conclusion. Well planned. I stood up in the middle of it because my Apple Watch told me. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Are you back, Ibrams? He must have had his step away. Okay. Any other comments for Chelsea? I have a question actually yeah. for Tosin. So I, uh, I just wanted to ask like getting a new customer and opening it for Android seems like a very simple solution, right? But why do you think Apple is not doing that? I think they're not doing it for particular. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I yeah, think they're not doing it purposely. Yeah. I also yeah. think they're not doing it purposely. So why is that? What's the logic so, behind that? So, so yes, I, I agree. And then that's been like a debate like over the years. Mm -hmm. So essentially, Apple wants to create this exclusive ecosystem where like a world garden, so to speak, where like customers are the other end of the fence. You know, you're just peeping through and then you want to get in something, and, you know. But then it's 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 clear that the, the world is so so that that advantage Apple used to have, you know, way back in the day. The, the competition is increasingly copying and copying, you know, and then there's that kind of so for example they are for the for Samsung, Samsung as there's a Samsung phone, there's a Samsung watch, and then there's an there's an Android Samsung, Samsung tablet you can use. So it used to be that Apple was there was just the iPad and then you had no cops coming to the market. So essentially this uh, that's why I started with the information around the number of users Apple had. Apple has historically grown in users with the iPhone. The iPhone was very distinct. They had like these awesome features that people love, and then they got into the ecosystem and then they grew users. But then it's becoming quite obvious because it took Apple about two years to go from 900, uh, from around 900 uh, million to 1 billion users. And that's too much when you think about it, like, you, you, you plot the graph. So essentially, it's, there's, not, there's not a question of they need to rethink the approach for bringing in new customers. The iPhone alone cannot, be, can, cannot remain that device 
I, I, Apple has acknowledged this by going into services, right? Trying to sell us Apple Music, trying to sell us Apple TV, and a lot of other services. And again, speaking to your question, Apple, the Apple Music is currently on the Android operating system. It was a shock to everybody too. You know, it used to be that well, Apple would have released this on only the iPhone, but then they did that. So I, I'm saying like, in the, they can also toe that same line and then still keep the exclusivity of the Apple ecosystem, but then creates more entry points for users to get in. That's interesting. I mean, hasn't that always been what characterized Apple, their operating system on their computer was always exclusive and, and closed. Um, and they have, that's been part of them since the beginning. That's a good idea. That's a very practical. They can, your argument is they can retain that. They can still retain they that. They can create new entry points. New entry points. Okay, guys, thank you. We managed to fill the entire time, even though we had five speakers. We'll have to do more efficient. Do we just give this feedback sheet to the speaker? Or? Yeah, we have well, to you, you have to send it to me, so take a picture of it. Okay.